Hello. Okay. Next tutorial. This look is hopefully you can tell a mummy, or the closest I can get to making a mummy. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like a mummy zombie inspired type look, but yeah. This actual look here is actually part of a collaboration with the amazing Beauty by Brick. I'll put her name there. Um, we both decided like to do a collaboration and like thought it'd be amazing to do like monster movies, but like original style monster movies, and just revamp them. If you forgive the pun, um, <laughs> to be like a bit more modern, a bit more creepy, gross. Um, yeah, so like the old-fashioned horror movies, like Bride of, uh, Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein, The Mummy, um, Creature from the Black Lagoon, that type of thing. So I chose The Mummy. Um, Beauty by Brick has actually chosen um, The Werewolf, which is amazing. I'll post a picture, um, the pictures at the end of the tutorial of my looks and Brig's work together so you can get to see everything. So a special thanks to Brig for doing this collaboration with me. Thank you so much. It's amazing. I had so much fun. <laughs> so stay tuned if you want to see how to recreate this look. Okay, okay, so to start off with, before you say anything, I know I have no top on, there is a reason for that. Um, <laughs> from what I understand, mummies do not wear clothes, they wear bandages. So, I am just going to literally stick loads and loads of bandages over me. Now, <laughs> I, was, I don't want to use regular bandage because it will just look too neat, and I want this kind of handmade feel to it. So, I've gone ahead and made doo -doo -doo, lots and lots and lots of handmade bandages. What I did was, I went to the store, went to the store, went to the store, went to a shop and bought um, uh, loads of, what they're called, like dishcloths type of thing. And I just cut them up into strips, and I dyed them with tea and coffee. So to make them look aged, and I ironed them, and cut them in half, and I was left with loads and loads of bandages. It did take me quite a while, but hey, yeah. <laughs> so I'm literally just going to stick that all to the bottom half of my body. Okay, um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use a mixture of like pinning it in place and I'm going to use some spirit gum as well just to hold it in place. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just literally applying this with some Mayron spirit gum. I'm just applying it into a small circle area and I'm literally sticking down just and holding it down and it will bond really nicely to the cloth which is nice. And I'm just going to keep wrapping it around. So the idea is I think it's just going to be, because it has to look fairly uniform because, I mean, they wouldn't have just slapped a mummy in, a person in cloth, they would have wrapped them around properly. So I can go all the way around my chest and then round my neck. You'll see what I mean. So as you can see, I made, I, I used tea and coffee. And, well, I used coffee ground, um, ground coffee and I used coffee, instant coffee and tea to make these different shades. Because I didn't want it all to be one shade, I wanted it all to be different just to give it a little bit of age texture and yeah, I don't know, it looks quite cool. So I've just put some on my neck. Now I'm not going all the way around, I'm just putting a glob there and a glob there, either side of these, of the spirit gum, so then it hangs nicer and it, when you you can move around a bit better and it's, yeah, it just looks more, I will say natural, but you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick this one to my neck. So the next one's going to go just about here. I mean, you don't have to copy the pattern that I'm doing, I'm just doing this because as I said, I don't want it to be random. So I'm going to put some glue in the centre, like that. It's a lot easier once you've got the base down, because you don't have to stick any more to yourself. You can just stick the bandage to itself. And it adheres really nicely to it, to your skin and to the bandage, so it's just a lot nicer to get off afterwards. I'm just going to stick that there, and I'm going to do exactly the same. Put another bit of spirit gum there, and then just stick that one there. Okie dokie, so um, I've d wrapped myself up. I've wrapped up to my elbows as well. Um, just literally by just wrapping the bandage around, that's all I've done. Uh, I'm not going to bother going along to my arms. I would if you'd go out with it, but I'm, just for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to do up to my elbows. Okay, so I was just about to apply a bald cap, but I've just realised if I'm going to be covering most of myself in bandage, I don't really need to. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to jump straight in and apply my prosthetic. Now the prosthetic that I'm using, or the prosthetic that I made rather, is... Um, uh, angry brow piece and a fake nose and I've left all the edges on because I always do that because when I blend them with witch hazel it disappears and it's easy to pull them off rather than just tear them and obviously it's made out of gelatin as I always use because it's easy to, easy to blend and it's cheap and it's recyclable etc um, I will do a video I know I always say this but I promise I will do a video teaching you guys how to make prosthetics but until then I'm just going to put some pictures at the end of this tutorial from start to finish from when I sculpted it to casting it to making it out of gelatin okay I'll put those at the end of this video um, okay, so I'm going to apply some Pro Stick, which is, uh, or you can use Spirit Gum, whichever you prefer. Pro Stick is a medical adhesive. Um, I'm going to apply that to the back of my prosthetic and then stick it straight down. Okay. 
the prosthetic didn't actually need a nose. I just sculpted an angry brow, but the reason I, uh, I sculpted a nose, a small nose, just so I can cut the end of the nose off, so that it makes it look like the tip of the nose has fallen off. I'm just going to put some blood on there, and hopefully it'll work. You never know. It doesn't need the nose. I could always take the nose off. It doesn't work, so... Okay, so I've applied some prosthetic to the back of that, and I'm just going to apply my prosthetic. Right, actually, sorry to backtrack. Um, I just took that prosthetic off um, because I realised I wanted to make the nose a bit, the nose hole a bit bigger. Um, but by doing that, obviously, I pretty much ruined the prosthetic, so I've quickly made another one. Okay, but so it's exactly the same, except this time I've got a hole cut out right in the middle. So when I colour it, hopefully that will look flat and it will look like I've got a hole missing out of my nose, that kind of thing. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna apply the pro stick to this and stick it down, and we'll go from there. Okay, so that's my prosthetic. So, like a really arched, ang angry brow, just, yeah, just basically, the reason I'm doing, I did this was because I wanted it just to be able to make the eyes really sunken, okay, and the nose, I've not put any shape to the nose, just a normal nose shape, but with this missing, so I can hopefully paint it, and should hopefully look like the end of the nose has fallen off, that's the idea anyway. Um, as for the edges, I'm going to blend them with witch hazel, because that's what uh, blends gelatin, but it doesn't matter a huge amount, because... I'm going to be using bandage to cover most of the face, so I'm going to be cheating a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I am going to be cheating. So, for example, I could have one going across there, and that covers all of those edges. <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, so, right, but I will try, I will be blending a little bit, like around the nose and the eyes, because obviously you can't hide everything. So, I'm going to take a cotton bud and some witch hazel, which you can buy at most cosmetic, not cosmetic, chemist type places, and I'm going to bl blend gently by rolling outwards on the thin edges. Okay, so now I've got that, well not blended, but I've gone in and done a lot of the blending already. Um, I'm going to take some liquid latex and a sponge, and I'm literally going to start applying this all over the edges here and here. This isn't really to blend, it isn't, isn't, but I'm going to be covering my entire face in, in the latex, just for some texture. But I'm going to start with the edges and work out, okay, because I don't want to touch, I don't really want to get much latex on the gelatin. Okay, so I've applied that to all of the edges. Um, and now I'm going to work outwards, okay, so I'm literally going to apply this all over my face, okay, don't, just don't go on the gelatin or this area here, okay. Okay, so as that's drying, um, I'm going to start applying some tissue paper prosthetics. Now, well, sort of, <laughs> uh, I don't usually use tissue paper and latex to make prosthetics, but give, I mean, it's because it gives off this texture that I'm not overly keen on. However, as I'm covering, I've covered the whole face in liquid latex to make the skin look aged and leathery. Um, this should hopefully work quite well. Um, so I've cut these little tiny shapes that can go right under the eye and then go there, just to enhance the cheekbones a little bit. Okay, so I'm, I've cut out about six of these for each eye. I'm not sure if I'm going to use all six, but we'll see. So I'm going to put that about there, just regular tissue paper, and I'm going to take my sponge again and I'm just going to dab that. I'm just going to dab it down on the edges and just soak it in the latex completely. Okay, so you should have something like that. I'm just going to do, um, I think, oh that's quite raised. I think I'll do, yeah I will do three on each. So I'm going to do another two on each one. So after I've applied it I'm going to put a tiny, tiny coat of latex over the top of them. Just to flatten it down and make sure it's completely stuck. And I'm going to apply the next ones over the top of them. Okay, so it should start looking like that. So not like incredibly far out, not as far out as the brow bone's going to be, but yeah, I mean I could have made cheek brown prosthetics with gelatin, but I wanted to give this a go because I think this is something more of you guys out there can do because I know gelatin prosthetics is a little bit more specialist and you'll need, you do need that tutorial, I promised you, which I will do and I'll keep saying I will do. Um, okay, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to do another coat all over my face, okay, with the liquid latex. Okay, so that's about my fourth coat, I think. So there's quite a lot of latex on there now. So the idea is when it's dry, I'm going to pick little tiny holes, maybe. I'm not too sure yet. I'll work around this as it goes on. Um, but yeah, so it's going to create this leathery effect, and it's all gross, and yeah, that's the idea. 
Okay, so when it's all dry, I'm going to start my foundation. So I'm going to be using quite a few colours for this. I'm not overly sure of the kind of effect that I want. I know it's going to have to be like skin coloured, but not, well, no, not skin, like leather. Like old, old skin. So I'm thinking dark browns and slight hints of skin tones and blacks, and greens, that kind of thing. So I'm going to start off with just using a dark foundation. This is a liquid foundation by MAC. This is NW35. It's the Studio Fixed Fluid. Okay, so I'm going to apply that all over here, all over my face, all over here, all over my face, and we'll go from there. I wanted to start off um, with a dark brown, but I never, I don't like starting off dark. It's a lot easier to start off with a lighter colour and then get darker and darker. Like I said during my um, Cheapest Creepers tutorial, but this skin, this tone is quite dark though. It's darker than my natural skin colour. I'm then going to take a dark brown foundation in NW55 by MAC, the same Studio Fix Fluid, and I'm just going to use a tiny bit of that on the areas where I want my shading to be. So I'm going to want some, quite a bit where my cheekbones are. I'm also just going to put some on my temples. Okay, I'm just going to put some down the centre of my prosthetic just to make those wrinkle lines a bit more harsh. Okay, so now that I've got like a basic, well obviously not a skin colour, but you know what I mean, a basic base going there, so I can start adding in my extra colours like, so I'm going to use some Snazaru Grass Green, and I'm actually going to apply this, with a, apply this with a sponge, so just so I can dab it randomly, not too heavy, just pretty much all over, because you still want that skin colour to show through. And then I'm going to do the same with some Snazaroo Black watercolour. I'm just going to put a little bit less of this on, just mainly where the highlight, the shading is. I also just went down the sides of my nose, just to make it look a tiny bit thinner. Okay. Okay, then just pinch the latex and make some tiny little holes, just like that. Okay. Just in, I'm just doing it in random places, just to make it look like areas where the flesh is just maybe falling off I guess just gross bits where I can put more blood really <laughs> there we go so I've got a hole, I actually got a hole in my prosthetic here because I think it gives a bit more depth which is cool and I've put a hole in here and a hole here why not <laughs> okay so now that's done I'm just going to apply another coat of foundation over all of this this is a mixture between those two foundations so like it's a leathery type browny type colour Whoops, sorry, skipped a step there. I just went in with some black. I mixed some of the black in with that foundation as well and went down the sides and just made it look a bit greyer. Okay, so now I'm going to take a small brush and some of the green, there it is, and I'm just going to cover the entire of my eye area with it. So stopping just where the prosthetic, just after the prosthetic starts. Okay, and then I'm going to go over it with a snazaroo black. I just went up to the arches of the eyebrows just to make the prosthetic stand out a bit more. Okay, so I've just got this line going down here which I've just tapered off a tiny bit on the eyes. Okay, so now we've done that, I can start on the wounds, or well, not the wounds, or like the middle of the nose and the holes, I can colour them in. So I'm taking a Cryolan Bruise Wheel and I'm going to use this, whoop, this dark purpley colour. Okay. The idea is I'm just going to put that on the edge of my the hole where my nose is. And also putting it on the edges of where my other cuts are. I then just took some of the lighter lighter colour, just like a, the off skin colour, similar to this, and I've just blended it all in together. Okay, as long as the edge, the outside of the edges are still dark, it's fine. Then taking the bright red, or well, the blood ready type colour, and I'm just going to colour in the centre of all of these cuts. I'm just going to put some fake blood in there. This is actually Crayolan fake blood, it's not my own one. Usually I make my own one, but as I'm not going to be really putting it in my mouth, um, it doesn't need to be edible, so I'm just using Crayolan. So I'm just going to put that all in where the cuts are. Right, so bandage. So I'm going to do probably, I mean I'm going to cover all of my hair, so I don't really want any of my hair on show. Um, but as I said, I didn't need to use a ball cap because I might as well just use this. 
So I'm literally going to, I think I'll cover my ears as well. So I'll just pin a lot of it in place. Um, other bits I might have to just glue, I think. Like, if I want to stick that there, I'll just glue it with some um, the uh, spirit gun method that I was using before, okay? I also just smeared some of the dark purple on my lips, just in no particular fashion, just messy, 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 because I just thought it needed something. Okay, I'm just going to quickly add some, just some lines that I'm going to blend in, because I think the forehead looks a bit too neat to me. I'm just going to highlight them with this lighter colour, just in everywhere I put the highlight, I'm just going to do that there and then blend it outwards. So just keep going until you you think it's about right really. It's one of them you can keep editing and editing and going in and out and yeah so yeah <laughs> you could keep because it's so messy you could just keep adding little bits to it and that but so yeah okay so that's the wrinkles done. Well not wrinkles but that's the shading and the skin texture is about right. And I just coloured in under my nose with a black purple just to make it a little bit darker under there. Okay. Finally, I'm going to take some MAC Black Fluid Line um, in Black Track, and I'm just going to put that on in the fluid on of both my eyes to make them look darker and deeper. Um, you could put some nicotine, um, what is it called, nicotine tooth decaying type th enamel on your teeth to make your teeth look a bit gross, but um, you can't really see my teeth, so I'm going to leave it for now. And that's it. That's the look complete. I just popped in two white up mesh contact lenses, so I can actually see through them. It's a little bit blurry because they're like a mesh, but I think it uh, completes the look. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that is my mummy inspired zombie creature look thing. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching. Um, I really hope you liked it. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, all that jazz if you liked it. Um, and yeah, so I will leave you now with the photos of my work and of Beauty by Bridges um, part of the collaboration. Yeah, so until next time, bye.